Uh, my name is Chris Martin. I play with a band called The Troubleshooters. We've uh, played around the Halifax scene and the maritime scene for uh, about seven years now. And uh, before that, I was playing as a solo acoustic artist, and I uh, did that for a few years as well. And um, you know, uh, we we play gigs in, in clubs and bars, and we record and uh, try to be involved in, in music in as many ways as we can be in festivals. And, things like that. So uh, yeah, I feel really attached to, uh, to the, the musical culture here and try to keep tabs on what people are doing and what's going on in the scene and just try to live, live the life as wholeheartedly as I can. Without a question, it was Café Ole. In fact, the, the all ages staple on Barrington Street. I, I think uh, it's, you know, heyday was definitely in the early mid 90s when uh, Halifax was having its alternative boom. And uh, all those bands were playing there. You know, you, if you were lucky enough, you could catch Sloan there or Eric Strip or uh, um, who else was there? I can't remember all the names right now. But uh, it, it was definitely the place to be as a teenager. And you'd even get some people who were of age going there because the bands were, were that good. And, Venue. Well, in those days, I think the, the top of the heap was the Birdland, and I got to go there once. I think it was a, a one of the early pop explosion shows or something had a, an all ages section, so I was able to go there before. I think that closed down as I turned 19, but um, you know there was some legendary shows that happened there, and uh, you know the Seahorse was was running then, but it wasn't like it is now. It was kind of like a punk rock bar, you know, and they had. Uh, Metal Mondays and, and stuff like that, you know. So it was a uh, it was a spot, but in a different way than it has become. Yeah, my first gig I, I ever got in town was at uh, um, Ginger's Tavern, and my second was here at Gus's, and then I think some of my early ones would have been at like um, uh, what's a spot called uh, the Tickle Trunk, and that became uh, the Idiot. I played there a little bit too, and. Uh, yeah, um, three out of those four venues are gone now, right? And here we are in Gus's. So well, I remember some really fond memories from Ginger's Tavern, because uh, the, the layout of the room was really cool, and at that time I was playing some quieter music, and, and that whole listening environment was really appropriate, but they still had the, the microbrew thing going, it felt like a tavern, and so people were still kind of there for a party, but it was, it was a really cool scene, and, you know, that's where I met and first performed with a lot of artists like uh, Laura Merriman and Ryan Cook and uh, Christina Martin and a lot of artists that have kind of gone on to really carve out a bit of a niche for themselves and, and I remember a time when we were all kind of there just with acoustic guitars playing songs for each other and uh, you know it's, it's kind of a cool thing to think back to that that scene bubbled up into something more over the years and it seems to be forgotten by a lot of people but it was pretty profound at the time. I guess uh, the Tribeca, which recently closed, uh, had a real heyday as well for, uh, for um, bands playing there. And the shows never really got that big. It was always known as a DJ venue. You know, Saturday and Friday nights they had the dance crowd. But through the week there was all these really cool rock shows going on. And uh, there'd be some, some of them would be well attended, but a lot of them were just kind of low key, friends of the band and stuff. And uh, the staff was always so cool and the atmosphere there with that room with all the stone uh, walls and all that. It was just a, a really fun scene that never really got big. Probably one of our high points as a band, we, uh, we've in the past year started teaming up with burlesque dancers and backing them up with live music and we'll kind of reverse uh, a big night of it and try to make a bigger production than your average bar show. So we had a chance just before the Paragon closed to put on a fairly big show there and, and basically filled the place and had a really electric atmosphere and I'd been really wanting to play that big stage uh, and hadn't had the opportunity uh, before that so uh, that that was a standout show definitely and you know it's another one of these venues that's gone now so it kind of remains like a, a memory you know? but I'm hopeful that someone else is going to come into that spot and uh, get that venue up and running again. We'll see about that. You know, I've noticed as it as it's happened, as bars have closed, usually within a year or two, another bar fills in the spot. You know, like there's always a, it's a cyclical thing, and there's down times and then there's up times. So, you know, I don't let it discourage me too much. I'm sure it's the same in other cities too. And for musicians, it's easy to kind of 
work through that because it's your passion and, and you love it. Uh, but for a bar, you know, like they, they just can't afford to to have poor nights, for example, or you know, just all the, all the financial things. I don't think it's the, I don't think there's any reasons besides financial reasons why it happens.